From the Bugatti Chiron to the Rolls-Royce Phantom, Tibetan Mastiffs to Ferrero Rocher, we look at why these things are so expensive. Let's get cracking. Fact. The Ferrero Rocher is an easily recognizable golden ball of sweetness that can cost a shocking $78 and above for a box or a pack. So why is it so expensive? In this video, we'll look at eight reasons why. Perceived value. The first reason why the Ferrero Rocher is so expensive compared to other sweets is that the price is based on perceived value. What this means is that people will never place an identical value on items of the same quantity and quality, but with different prices. Thus, if two identical bottles of wine of the same vintage that came from the same vineyard were priced differently, people will almost always buy the more expensive bottle of wine on the theory that the more expensive something is, the better quality it must offer. What this means is that given that other sweets and chocolates are relatively cheap, the makers and sellers of Ferrero Rocher decided to price their crunchy creation highly to distinguish it from the pack and lead in an air of prestige it might or might not qualify for. Let's take a break here for the quiz. Now, who do you think created Ferrero Rocher? Was it A, Jason Ferrero, B, Burt Ferrero, C, Michelle Ferrero, or D, Stephen Ferrero? Think you know the answer? Write it right now in the comment section below and keep watching till the end of the video to find out if you're correct as we reveal the answer. Secretive production process. The second reason why Ferrero Rocher is so expensive is that it's made using a secretive production process that no one can identify or imitate. This enables the firm to charge whatever it feels like for its crunchy balls of sweetness. Many ingredients are used to make the Ferrero Rocher, with sugar, cocoa butter, hazelnuts, milk chocolate, wheat flour, and salt being some of the more notable ones. Each Ferrero Rocher has a roasted hazelnut within that's slightly covered with hazelnut chocolate, and this too is covered with chopped hazelnut and milk chocolate. All these make the Ferrero Rocher an incredibly delicious and chewy treat. But while we do know what goes into each Ferrero Rocher, knowing exactly how it's made is what still eludes us, and there's little possibility that will change anytime soon. Indeed, the firm that makes Ferrero Rocher takes its job so seriously, it never allows smartphones or anything else with cameras into the production facility. Once in a blue moon, journalists are allowed to tour these facilities, and you can be sure that any picture they're allowed to take will be heavily scrutinized and vetted before the public release. Remove the secrecy around its production process, and it's probable that the Ferrero Rocher would be much cheaper than it is now. They are actually good. The third reason why the Ferrero Rocher is so expensive is that it is rather good. Yeah, Ferrero Rocher does charge a premium for its candy, but that might be justified since they taste so awesome and go down as smoothly as if they were blessed by the gods. Consumers frequently gush over this specific brand of candy, and there's a ton of reviews on Amazon and other sites warning you not to try a Ferrero Rocher unless you're prepared to overload your senses. This candy is often described as being so good, you could easily eat a dozen at a single sitting with little awareness of what you actually did. Supposedly, if you make a point of frequently biting into the yummy goodness of Ferrero Rocher confectionaries, all other chocolates and candies might cease to have meaning for you. It helps that they're available in containers that hold from 16 to 48 gold-colored balls of yummy greatness, which means you can always buy the right size of sweetness for your needs. Excellent packaging. The next reason why the Ferrero Rocher can be so expensive is that it's an excellently packaged luxury item. The detailed packaging almost makes it look like buyers are purchasing destiny-altering stuff. With heavy use of gold foil and luxury imaging, the Ferrero Rocher is always an engrossing sight. Boxes and packs of this candy scream class and style, not to mention obsessive attention to detail, and all these come at a price. The packaging also makes the Ferrero Rocher easily recognizable, and that is vital in a world that's awash with chocolate and confectionery makers. Ferrero takes their packaging so seriously that sometimes the weight and the foil of the paper used to package this type of candy can contribute to up to 40% of the total weight of a typical box or pack. Sure, you can eat chocolates better by far than the Ferrero Rocher and cheaper too, but these are very likely to be packaged much more blandly. With the Ferrero Rocher, you can satisfy your craving for chocolate and nutty and chewy fillings in a much more classy way, and that's part of the appeal. It's a class thing. The fifth reason why the Ferrero Rocher can be rather expensive is that it's a status symbol. Immigrants to America in particular hold it in very high esteem and see it as one of the best stuffs that can be given or received as gifts. For immigrant Americans, the Ferrero Rocher quickly came to symbolize class, good taste, success, and the fullest enjoyment of life. Thus, whenever they paid a visit to anyone, they usually brought along something with them, and that was usually a box of Ferrero Rocher. When guests arrived, serving them from a box of Ferrero Rocher was seen as the hosts being eminently hospitable, willing to go above board to cater to the needs of the visitors, and up for showing them that the family was not lacking in class or good taste. So how many pieces of Ferrero Rocher can you consume at one sitting? 10? 20? Yeah, speak up, don't be shy. Let us know in the comment section below. Strict quality control. 
The next reason why the Ferrero Rocher is so expensive can be attributed to the very strict quality control. This, of course, costs money, with the firm hiring and paying expert tasters whose job is to ensure that each batch tastes as it should and is physically flawless. These professional tasters are some of the best all over the world, and paying them for what they do costs a pretty penny for sure. Quality control also involves the use of the very best ingredients and machines, and this isn't cheap. Marketing and Distribution The seventh reason why any box of Ferrero Rocher could set you back a significant amount is that the price includes marketing and distribution costs. Marketing has to do with the firm telling us all at the top of their lungs why their candy is so good for us in just about every possible way. All well and good, except that the consumer bears the cost of every marketing campaign the firm embarks on. What this means is that when people queue up to buy Ferrero Rocher, they basically give the firm back the money it spent in telling them all about its product. That's how stuff works. Distribution costs also have a bearing on the final cost of the Ferrero Rocher. While the firm has multiple factories, finished products need to be moved from these factories to the malls and the shops, and that's not easy or cheap. Perfect gift items. The eighth reason why the Ferrero Rocher can be rather expensive is that it is eagerly sought after as the perfect gift item for every imaginable occasion. This is not all that unexpected, given that it has a very eye-catching design and it's extremely delicious. Sometimes referred to as golden pleasures, almost 4 billion Ferrero Rochers are sold around the globe yearly, with about two-thirds of all Ferrero Rocher sales happening in the last three months of every year. From October to December, folks all over the planet start avidly buying them up by the sack load to gift to friends, siblings, relatives, co-workers, and the like. With demand being what it is, especially during the holiday season, one can be forgiven for thinking that the owner of the Ferrero Rocher brand made a wise move by putting a high price on its golden pleasures, and we can't fault them for it. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you who you thought the inventor of the Ferrero Rocher might be. If you answered Michel Ferrero, you must be a huge Ferrero Rocher fan. Michel named his invention after a grotto in the Roman Catholic Shrine of Lourdes. Patek Philippe watches vary in price from a reasonable $12,500 to a rather outrageous $2.5 million. So why are Patek Philippe watches so expensive? In this video, we'll look at eight reasons why. Peerless exclusivity. The first reason why Patek Philippe watches are so expensive is that compared to most other watchmakers, they don't make their watches on a massive scale. For example, in any normal year, Patek Philippe puts out about 50,000 watches on the market. That might seem like a lot, but Rolex manufactures and sells almost a million of its watches every year. Now that's a lot. Patek Philippe's production rate is low, mainly because their watches are incredibly complex masterpieces that take time to put together. Every watch takes from 9 months to 2 years or more to craft by hand, with this varying based on this specific model. But there are always exceptions, like the Henry Graves super complication, which was planned in 3 years and produced in 5. Then there's the limited edition Grandmaster Chime that Patek Philippe rolled out for its 175th anniversary. Only seven examples of this specific and awesomely complex watch were ever made, with eight years spent just deciding on the dials and internal geometry. Let's take a quick break for the quiz. Now, Patek Philippe watches can cost about as much as a couple Bugatti Chirons. So what do you think is the most that's ever been paid out for a Patek Philippe? Is it A, 5 million, B, 9.57 million, C, 59.3 million, or D, 31.19 million? Take a big guess in the comments below right now and stick around to the end of the video to find out if you were correct as we reveal the answer. Amazing quality. The second reason why Patek Philippe watches are so incredibly expensive is they're made of the highest possible quality for a clientele that demands nothing but the best and will gladly pay for that privilege. Strict quality controls govern all aspects of their watchmaking operations, from employee training to customer care and mistakes are not allowed. Patek Philippe is so sure of the quality and endurance of their products that they offer a lifetime service privilege on any watch made by them. This pledge means that the firm will gladly restore and maintain any watch produced by it from its inception to present. Consistent innovation. The third reason why Patek Philippe watches are so expensive is they take advantage of the latest innovation in materials and production processes. Patek Philippe itself is responsible for bringing about more than a hundred seminal and earth-shaking advances in the field of horology that have successfully been patented and some of these are still in use at the moment. Examples of these patents include the 1889 patent for perpetual calendar mechanism for pocket watches, the 1949 patents for Patek Philippe Gyromax balance, and the 1996 patent for annual calendar mechanism. As you can imagine, innovation does not come cheap and the costs are of course passed on to consumers who appear more than happy to pay what's asked for. Precise hand finishing. 
The next reason why you might need to sell half of your liver and one of your kidneys to get your hands on a Patek Philippe is the firm has a rather obsessive focus on hand finishing its creations to perfection. Patek Philippe takes pride in hand finishing all parts of its watches and this takes a lot of time and not a few buckets of elbow grease. Both the inner and outer parts of these watches are obsessively polished and decorated by hand and while you can't see what the inside looks like unless you pry it open, there is a certain feeling that comes with knowing that you're wearing a hand finished masterpiece that's as breathtakingly beautiful inside as it is outside. Ruminate on the fact that watch cases made by the firm are crafted by hand from individual pieces of gold or platinum. Bracelet links are similarly painstakingly cut one at a time and polished by hand with this process usually taking a day or two. That's all shades of impressive. Excellent resale value. The fifth reason why Patek Philippe watches are so expensive is that they can be used as a store of wealth since they offer excellent resale value, almost like blue chip stocks. What this means is that rather than buying stocks and shares to retire on when you're old and worn out, you can buy a Patek Philippe watch and rest assured that when you sell it later, you will make much more than what you paid for it. Go ahead and search for vintage Patek Philippe watches and see what they cost you right now compared to what the owner shelled out. Go ahead, I'll wait. As an example, Nautilus watches originally went on sale in the 1970s for about $3,000. But these days, these watches are often priced north of $50,000. Patek Philippe watches offer such an excellent store of value that you have to be on the waiting list for years before you can score a new model. And not everyone who has the money makes it to the waiting list. Long Standing Heritage the sixth reason why Patek Philippe watches can cost more than what you paid for your house is that this storied watchmaking firm has impeccable pedigree and heritage. They've been making class leading watches for a long time, since 1839 actually. And when you do something so ruthlessly demanding for so long, you tend to get very good at it. Their staff are extremely experienced, talented, creative, and versatile, and all of these skills are not cheap to learn or teach. A class craftsmanship. The seventh reason why Patek Philippe watches cost so much is that they're handcrafted to the highest possible standard, bar none. If there's a single thing that distinguishes all watches made by this firm, it's an obsessive attention to detail, combined with a perfectionist attitude towards every possible aspect of the watchmaking process. Patek Philippe takes the greatest possible care with their timepieces. All elements are scrupulously handcrafted, made from the finest materials and painstakingly put together by folks who are extremely good at what they do and are determined to do the best that they can. All of this takes time, and time costs money. They are status symbols. The eighth reason why Patek Philippe watches are so expensive is quite simply that such watches are a status symbol. In fact, due to the rarity, complexity, and exclusivity, no other watch has the status and cachet of a Patek Philippe. As such, most of the wealthiest and most influential individuals in the world wear and use one, and members of the royalty love it. Albert Einstein, Princess Diana, Queen Elizabeth II, the Dalai Lama, the Beatles, and Brad Pitt are a sample of the eminent personages who have worn Patek Philippe watches over the years. Even the notorious Conor McGregor has one. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you to guess what the highest amount of money ever paid out for a Patek Philippe watch was. If you guessed 31.9 million, Give yourself a pat in the back. The watch in question is a Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime sold at auction for the aforesaid sum in November of 2019. These are macarons, or French macaroons, and they cost on average a hefty $4 per cookie. They are the caviar of the cookie world, synonymous with decadence and luxury. The most expensive one ever made was over $9,000. So why are macarons so expensive? expensive ingredients. The first and a huge reason why macarons are so expensive is because it typically uses more expensive ingredients compared to regular cookies. The macaron, or French macaroon, not to be confused with regular macaroons, uses almond flour, food dye, egg whites, icing sugar, and sugar. Almond meal is very expensive compared to regular flour. For example, the average cost of one pound of regular wheat flour is about 50 cents. On the other hand, one pound of almond flour, made from blanched almonds, can cost around $7.50. So that's practically 15 times the cost of normal flour. Well, this may not actually seem like that much, it adds up when you produce a large batch of cookies. So why is almond flour so expensive? Well, because of the process of refining the almonds. This isn't just powdered almonds. The almonds have to be blanched first, then hydrated, then powdered. During this process, a lot of almonds go to waste. Almonds are expensive already, so blanched almond meal is going to be even pricier. 
Now, the almond flour is made into a meringue and is sandwiched with some delicious filling in the middle. There are a variety of fillings available, ranging from salted caramel, praline, fruit jam, to vanilla buttercream. Also, note that while these ingredients are expensive as it is, they also have to be of the highest quality. If you use organic almonds, for example, it will cost you even more. Remember, the macarons must have a very specific texture, so the ingredients can't be subpar. And then we should also think about the cost of the fillings. Traditional fillings include things like vanilla buttercream, jam, pistachio, and chocolate ganache. However, fillings have become more exotic and elaborate these days. You'll find things like matcha, tiramisu, lavender, and coconut. Pierre Hermy even introduced a ketchup-flavored macaron. They are very, very difficult to make. The second and perhaps biggest reason why macarons are so expensive is because they require an impeccable technique. As any amateur baker will tell you, to make them. Any deviation can ruin the delicate light texture of the almond meringue. They are extremely sensitive to moisture levels, and it takes a very seasoned baker at the very least to make them. There's a reason why French pastry chefs are celebrated around the world, and their mastering of the very complex macarons is one of them. Even the pastry making skills may not be enough to master the French macaroon. Slight changes in the humidity of the room can also affect the texture, so the humidity in the room needs to be controlled while you're making them. The macaron depends on its light, airy texture, which requires the perfect moisture level. If there's too much, it can turn soggy. If there's too little, the macarons will end up cracked. The macaron shape is also very sensitive to technique. Typically, macarons have to be perfectly round, which is hard to achieve in an oven. If the piping technique is off, macarons will look irregular. Perhaps the most notorious mistake people make with macarons is getting the batter folding technique wrong. If you don't fold it properly, it can cause excess air hollows inside the macaron and cause it to fall apart. Literally completing every stage of the macaron making process is like walking in a minefield of potential baking errors. Skilled pastry makers are needed. The third reason why macarons are so expensive is because of the labor cost of hiring skilled pastry chefs. Macarons are one of the hardest confectionaries to make, and not all pastry chefs are qualified to make them. While you can definitely make macarons at home at a reasonable cost, if you decide to buy them at a pastry shop or dessert place for high tea, it's going to cost you because, as we mentioned, it is very difficult to master macarons. You will need experienced pastry chefs to guarantee great macarons every time, so a lot of high-end places will only hire the best pastry chefs, which will cost you a pretty penny. Those French pastry school credentials don't come cheap after all. Even then, not all pastry chefs are qualified in making macarons. Can you hire the best and most expensive pastry chef? Yeah, but there's always the chance that something will go wrong with the macarons. Perhaps the cost will go down as more brands are looking to automate the macaron making process. We have seen this with companies like Costco who are now mass producing the cookies. But even here, the issue is that the macaron making process needs a lot of good human judgment. So automating it won't be as easy as for other treats. It depends on where you buy the macarons from. The fourth reason why macarons are so expensive is because it depends on where you buy them. The prices of macarons vary quite a bit between cities and different pastry shops. For example, in some cities in the US, you can buy great macarons for about two bucks, while it can cost as much as four in more expensive cities like San Francisco or New York. What about authentic French macarons? Well, France has the gold standard for macarons, so if you take a high-end place like Pierre Hermy, which is the world famous for their macarons, it'll cost you about $3.11 per macaron. The other established macaron place in Paris is Laudry Paris, where a box of 12 can cost you 41 bucks, which comes to $3.41 per macaron. That's just below a week's worth of groceries in some US cities. Some of these prices have less to do with the cost of the macarons and more to do with the brand and operating costs. You can get them for slightly cheaper if you order them online. Another thing of note is that macarons are a relatively novel food still in the US, so it's usually dedicated macaron makers or gourmet pastry shops that make them. However, its popularity is catching on, and larger supermarket chains like Costco are making them. And as they're becoming more mass produced now, their costs will go down in the future. But. As much as companies like to try to automate it, French macarons produced in gourmet French patisseries are still in high demand. For these macaron consumers, they value the authenticity of the world-renowned French treats. 
so they're pretty much paying for the experience of authentic French cuisine rather than the cookie itself. You'll often see obligatory selfies in Paris with a box full of French macarons from tourists. Will the French macaron soon trump the French baguette as the most quintessential French food? Well, with those bright pastel green, pink, and orange colors, well, they'll certainly be very photogenic. The fifth reason why macarons are so expensive is because a lot of them can end up in the bin. As we mentioned earlier, it's very easy to get them wrong. They will need to be perfectly round, uniform, and have a very specific texture. They also need to be stored really well because they are so sensitive to humidity. So, even if pastry chefs get it right, the cookies could be destroyed easily while storing and handling. Because the macarons are so light and airy, they will absorb moisture from the air like a sponge, at which point they become soggy. Because of all these requirements, it's easy for even the best pastry chefs to get wrong. And when they do, a lot of high-end pastry shops may not want to sell them. With the macaron batter folding technique, there's always the risk of air bubbles being trapped inside, no matter how much you fold it. Compared to other pastries, you'll end up with more unsellable goods. And all those imperfect macarons that don't make it onto the shop floor mean expensive ingredients wasted, adding to the overall cost. This is the Rolls-Royce Phantom, and it costs a gargantuan $450,000. So why is it so expensive? It takes ages to build. The first reason why the Rolls-Royce Phantom is so expensive is because of just how long it takes to produce one. While regular car makers prioritize speed of assembly and production, Rolls-Royces, including the Phantom, are known to take their own sweet time. On average, it takes around eh, six months to build a single Rolls-Royce car. This is mainly down to the level of manual labor required to build a Rolls-Royce. While other car makers rely on automated processes and robots, Rolls-Royce requires technicians to manually do basic tasks such as stitching the Rolls-Royce logo onto the car seats, for example. In fact, did you know that Rolls-Royce has a separate person for coach lighting? To paint the lines that run across the car's body. No, oh, and he does it all by hand too, for all Phantoms. A lot of these technicians are based in the UK as well, where the labor costs are much higher. If that wasn't expensive enough, you'll be amused to know that the Rolls-Royce's coach liner, named Mark, is on standby to travel to their consumers and do the coach lining. So, if your coach liner looks worn off and needs new ones, but you're in Paris? Well, don't worry. Mark will fly out and paint some new lines on it for you. You can really see that Rolls-Royce spares no expense when it comes to catering to their customers, down to the very last details. All of this is quite time-consuming, and manual labor costs far more per hour than automated robots, so you can imagine the labor costs that will add up over a period of six months. Exclusive Parts The second reason why the Rolls-Royce Phantom is so expensive is the amount of exclusively produced components it uses. As you'd expect with a luxury car costing over 400 grand, some of the components and hardware in the Rolls-Royce Phantom are exclusive to the Phantom. For example, the Phantom contains a twin turbocharged 6.75 liter V12 engine. This is a unique variant of BMW's N74 twin turbocharged petrol engine. It's exclusively manufactured for Rolls-Royce by BMW. Another exclusive component worth mentioning is the Architecture of Luxury, which is a space frame built entirely of aluminum that's produced by Rolls-Royce themselves. This platform is at the heart of all Rolls-Royce Phantoms and provides superb rigidity and stiffness for the smoothest and silkiest of rides. Producing exclusive parts will inevitably drive the price up compared to mass-produced generic components. Special Perks and Gadgets The third reason the Rolls-Royce Phantom is so expensive is all the special features and perks it comes with. Is it even a luxury car if it doesn't have a built-in mini-fridge to store champagne while on the go? Well, that's exactly what the Phantom has. So if you truly want to feel luxurious on a hot summer day, you can reach into the refrigerated compartment between the rear passenger seats and pop a bottle of champagne. Oh, and it comes with pretty glasses too. So some more cool features in the Phantom include picnic tables in the front and rear seats that automatically lower at the touch of a button. This picnic table also has an infotainment screen where the passenger can see details of the journey, such as the speed and direction. As a passenger, you can even set up the directions of the trip from their own screens, so you don't even have to talk to the guy you hired to drive you. If you're truly having a bad day, there are opaque black curtains that roll out automatically in front of the windows at the touch of a button. This feature is going to cost you a cool $7,700, by the way. 
because tinted windows are just too basic. Want to feel like you're gazing into the starry night in your Phantom? Well, Rolls Royce has you covered. The headliner on Phantoms can get you tiny lights scattered against the pitch black background that you can turn on at night. More cool features include special foam filled tires to reduce the noise of the road and the ability to automatically raise or lower the characteristic Rolls Royce spirit of ecstasy at the front. Well, why would you need all of this, you ask? Well, sometimes it's not a good idea for everyone to know you're driving around in a $450,000 vehicle. Rolls Royce also lets you choose a paint color from a palette of 44,000 colors. You want your car to be the exact shade of your late grandma's favorite lipstick? Well, don't worry. Rolls Royce will make it happen for you. The level of customizability. The fourth reason why Rolls Royce Phantoms are so expensive is because of the insane level of customization. As is common for Rolls Royce cars, $450,000 is just an average price for the Phantom. There's actually no limit to the upper limit costs of it. It all depends on how much you customize it, and Rolls Royce spares no expense and effort when it comes to making their rich customers feel like it. Here are some crazy instances of customers that required mind-boggling features. One customer didn't just want a starry night headliner in the roof of their car, they wanted little LEDs to follow the same exact pattern as the constellation of stars that were present on the night sky that the customer was born. Now, that is taking astrology to a whole new level. On another occasion, a customer wasn't satisfied with the 44,000 paint color palette Rolls-Royce offered. They decided they wanted their cars to be painted black. But get this, they wanted that black paint to incorporate crushed diamonds. And that's exactly what Rolls-Royce did. They crushed up a bag of diamonds and incorporated it into the exterior paint. Another customizability feature Rolls-Royce offers is a choice of unique artwork to be featured in your car. They will commission artists and sculptors to produce it for you. They have done the craziest artwork so far, including 3D printed patterns in stainless steel that was gold plated as well as ceramic flower patterns, just so you can feel like a moving art gallery with art that was specially made for you. On another Phantom model, the black headliner required an intricate pattern of roses and butterflies that were to be embroidered into it. The final pattern contained one million individual stitches. Rolls-Royce offers unlimited customizations and upgrades, and this is one of the main reasons why they're so expensive. It's a Rolls-Royce. The final reason why the Phantom is so expensive? Well, it's a Rolls-Royce. It's a luxury car brand, so of course it's not going to come cheap. The Phantom, aside from exclusive and one-off Rolls-Royce cars such as the Rolls-Royce Sweptail is the most expensive of the Rolls-Royce cars at $450,000, but its siblings like the Ghost and Wraith come in $300,000 and $400,000 ranges too. When you own a Phantom, you'll be joining the likes of Drake, Beyonce and Jay-Z, David Beckham, Lady Gaga, and Simon Cowell. Rolls-Royce represents the whole couture of the automotive world, as with most luxury brands, a part of the price tag comes with the bragging rights of owning one of their products. So if you're looking for a car that includes the latest gadgets and features to make up for the costs, Rolls-Royce is probably not where you should be looking. The Rolls-Royce Phantom actually has a pretty bad fuel consumption at a measly 14 miles per gallon. Yeah, the Rolls-Royce uses up more fuel per mile than, say, a Ford Focus. Now then again, if owners are willing to shell out close to half a million dollars for a car, I don't think they're going to be too worried about the cost of fuel. Get this. The Brabus Invicto Mission, which is based on the Mercedes-Benz G500, costs a more than shocking 665,000 euros, so about $800,000. And it's not even the most expensive car in the Brabus lineup. So why are Brabus vehicles so outrageously expensive? Only a few are made. So you hear about Brabus all the time, right? They have a reputation for giving all kinds of vehicles the power, the majesty, and luxury needed to enable them to impress all comers. But that's not what we're really focusing on here. Instead, let's face the fact that the main reason why automobiles made by Brabus are so expensive is that only a few are made each year. Yeah, they're not mass produced and there's not many of them out there, with each personalized to the maximum in accordance to the wishes, tastes, and personal proclivities of the would-be owner. Shocking, right? As an example, both the Brabus Rocket 900 and the Brabus GV12 900 are made in 10 iterations each. That assures exclusivity, meaning that if you do get your hands on a Brabus automobile, you can cheerfully boast of driving one of the rarest cars around that onlookers can only see and touch and most likely never be able to afford. Let's take a break here for the quiz. Who founded Brabus? 
was A, Noah Bravis, B, Bodo Bushman, C, Alex Flynn, or D, Wilhelm Maybach? Take a big guess in the comments below right now and stick around to the end of the video to find out if you were correct as we reveal the answer. Incredible personalization options. The second reason why Brabus vehicles cost so much is that they come with the most extensive array of personalization options known to mankind. Regardless of how you want your vehicle to look, sound, or perform, Brabus is down for that and has a reputation of delivering to the limit and beyond. So if you want your vehicle made of solid 18 karat gold, or you want the interior to look like the personal palace of an avowed sybarite who just inherited a diamond mine, well, Brabus can make that possible, so long as you're willing to pay whatever it asks for. Similarly, if you need a rolling office that's more comfortable than a cushion at the right hand of the Almighty, or a supercar with more power to it than a tornado with anger issues, Brabus is more than willing to make that happen. There's almost nothing they can't do, and almost no length they won't go. They'll even armor your car with their Invicto VR6 Plus ERV program. Tell them your dream car and they'll make it into a reality. One caveat though, your car must be a Mercedes-Benz, a smart car, or a Maybach, as Brabus only specializes in these three brands. The quality. The third reason why Brabus automobiles cost what they do is simply because they're made of the highest standard of automobile excellence. No vehicle leaves their factory without passing through stringent tests that other automobile manufacturers balk at and each is attended to by very qualified experts who are exceedingly good at what they do and very experienced too. Even better, all Brabus vehicles make use of the best components such as carbon fiber, platinum edition forged wheels, a limitless variety of leather and Alcantara varieties for the interior, and these are certainly not cheap. Some Brabus cars are also endowed with what's called the Brabus Starry Sky Headliner. This starry sky headliner lights up with hundreds of stars that beautifully change color in sync with the ambient lighting in the car. Given the extent of the attention to detail that Brabus devotes to each of their vehicles, it's more than understandable that they cost what they do. They have since gained a well-deserved reputation for delivering quality workmanship and crafting the kind of vehicles that the angels on high would be most delighted to possess. The additional power. Another reason why Brabus vehicles are so expensive is that they have power. Lots of that, in fact. Now, when Brabus gets their hands on a car, they set about improving in all aspects. They make the interior the most luxurious and impressive it can be, and then they set about tuning the engine and adding modifications that give it nearly unimaginable amounts of power and torque. The Brabus Rocket 900, for example, has a 900 horsepower V8 engine that makes it possible for the automotive work of art to reach 100 kilometers an hour in 2.8 seconds and 300 kilometers an hour in 23.9 seconds. That's absurdly fast for a four-door coupe. There's no comparing a standard vehicle with a Brabus automobile of the same model, because the latter is invariably faster, smoother, and potent in just about every way. People who fork over the cash for a Brabus do so in expectation of getting their hands on a vehicle that can almost outrun anything else merrily rolling down the highway, based on pricey cars. And so we come to the fifth reason why Brabus vehicles are so expensive. It might seem kind of ludicrous, but part of the reason why Brabus vehicles are so highly priced is that they're based on cars that are in themselves pricey. For instance, the Brabus 850 is based on the $135,000 Mercedes AMG GLS 63 4Matic, while the Brabus 800 is based on the $150,000 Mercedes AMG S63. They are a status symbol. The sixth reason why Brabus automobiles are so expensive is they're a status symbol for the rich and famous. There's a certain cachet in having one because you will automatically be seen as being rich and having better taste than your peers. Brabus vehicles routinely show up in the music video shoots of movies driven by flashy rappers and evil movie henchmen, and they're the personal chariots of celebrities like Drake. It's generally accepted that you get yourself one once you have the money and want to announce to the people of your city and the tax man that you have crisp greenbacks in abundance and you're not scared of spending as much as it takes to show off your newfound affluence and influence. They command awe, respect, and attention. The seventh reason why Brabus vehicles are so expensive is that they command awe, respect, and attention. And you can't really do that with something cheap. Now, if you're a shrinking violet, then cars with the Brabus badge are certainly not for you. Every vehicle that Brabus tunes out is meant to draw the attention of all eyes and firmly hold on to this until the next century, if possible. They are usually all black, as imposing as an alien ship, and look spectacular even in the pitch black of night. Brabus vehicles have a way of silently screaming their power and announcing their presence, and whenever they appear, crowds invariably gather. Even those who are not at all knowledgeable about cars will usually find themselves drawn to the Brabus automobile, like a moth to a flame or a kid to an ice cream stand. 
Yeah. Bravis makes vehicles that command attention, awe, and respect. And there is a price to be paid for that. Now, if you had the cash, how many Bravis vehicles would be taking up space in your garage? And what specific models do you like best? Something like a fun but ludicrously tiny Bravis Ultimate E or the lightning-fast Bravis Rocket 900. Drop your views in the comment section. Brabus Classic. The last reason that makes Brabus cars so expensive is their classic division. Have a vintage Benz that you want restored to a T? Brabus will do that for you. Brabus prides themselves in a restoration process that caters to the first screw to the last. When you bring in your classic Mercedes Benz, folks at Brabus will inspect and index all parts, discarding all unserviceable parts in the process. Then they replace all lost and damaged parts with newly manufactured, genuine Mercedes parts. I mean, just look at these restored vintage Benzes. You'd mistake them for new ones. Here's a restored 280 SL Pagoda, a restored 280 SE 3.5 Cabriolet, and even a restored 300 SL Gullwing. This doesn't come cheap. For instance, restoring a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Roadster, like this one, will cost you over $2 million. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you who the founder of Brabus was. If you guessed Bodo Bushman, you're right. Bodo looked high and low for a car customizer who could grasp his vision and requirements but couldn't find one. So he decided to start his own car tuning company. These are Tibetan Mastiffs. And one of these giant pooches can fetch up to a whopping one and a half million dollars. That's a little under the price of a Bugatti Varian and the cost of seven Lamborghini Urus. So why are Tibetan Mastiffs so expensive? They are very rare. The first reason why Tibetan Mastiffs are so expensive is because of how rare they are. As you can tell from the name, they're a breed of large dog that originated in Tibet. They have long been used as guard dogs in the mountainous areas of Tibet. They were used to watch over livestock, such as sheep from wolf attacks. They're also used to guard Tibetan monasteries from intruders. They're also very strong, having adapted well to the harsh Tibetan climate. They were one of the few mammals that were able to adapt to lower oxygen levels in the extremely high altitudes. This is partly because they'd mixed early on with the Tibetan wolf. Considering Tibet itself as an exotic Far Eastern destination, this only adds to the allure of Tibetan Mastiffs and their rarity. They are also so rare because they have developed in such an inaccessible and inhospitable part of the world with little mixing with other dog breeds. The original full-blooded Tibetan Mastiffs look very different and smaller than the dogs you see today. The dogs you see now have been bred to exaggerate certain features and have deviated a bit from the original breed. According to the American Kennel Club, there are only around 5,000 of the Mastiffs registered. They're considered to be the origins of other similar breeds such as the English Mastiff, St. Bernard, Burmese Mountain Dog, and the Great Pyrenees. These gentle giant pooches come in a variety of different colors including black, white, golden, and a deep red, which is the rarest color for a Tibetan Mastiff. These red-colored Mastiffs tend to be more expensive than the other colors due to the rarity, and in 2011, a red Tibetan Mastiff called Big Splash was sold for one and a half million dollars. Puppy love comes with a huge price tag, apparently. Rare Characteristics The second reason why Tibetan Mastiffs are so expensive is their very unique appearance. They literally look like a cross between a St. Bernard and a lion. The most prized characteristic of the Tibetan Mastiff is their majestic mane around the head, which resembles that of a lion. This is something that's not seen in any other dog breed. A Mastiff's fur around the neck is much longer and thicker than elsewhere on the body. So if you want something that's regal like a lion, but also friendly and huggable, a Tibetan Mastiff is your best bet. Another very prized characteristic in these dogs is their ginormous size. They are extremely furry and have a huge head compared to the body. All of this adds to the cuteness factor and desirability. They are one of the largest dog breeds on the planet, with females weighing in in a range of 70 to 110 pounds, and the males weigh in between 90 and 132. They come to a height of about 27 inches, which is just over half a meter. In fact, English Mastiffs, which are considered the largest dog breed in the world and are about 76 centimeters tall, are closely related to the Tibetan Mastiffs. Also, for a very large dog of its size, Tibetan Mastiffs have a milder temperament. This makes them great family dogs, which also, again, drives up their demand and the price even more. Prize Dogs The third reason why Tibetan Mastiffs are so expensive is that they're quite popular in dog shows like Crufts. Every year, around 20,000 dogs from over 40 countries compete in the show. 
here they showcase some of the most exclusive and rarest dog breeds in the world. Dog breeds showcased at these dog shows will generate hype and demand, which again drives up the price. For example, you can get a Tibetan Mastiff puppy for around $2,000 to $5,000 in the US, which is really not too expensive for a pedigree dog. However, a Tibetan Mastiff was sold in 2014 for almost $2 million at a luxury pet fair in China. So much of it depends on the hype and demand generated in a particular region or country. Because of their popularity and unique appearance, Tibetan Mastiffs are a common fixture in luxury pet fairs in China. This dries up their cost even more there as it helps generate more hype. Note that similar to other pedigree dogs, Mastiffs that perform well in these dog shows will have a very expensive bloodline. People will be lining up for their own puppies from the prize winners, and they are prepared to pay a pretty penny for them. Though you may think that such a high price would deter buyers, the high cost of Tibetan Mastiffs is actually what attracts people. They are seen as status symbols by the wealthy upper classes, especially in China, where the prices of Tibetan Mastiffs come in the millions. So they are one of those breeds that are expensive just for the fact of being expensive. High Maintenance The fourth reason why Tibetan Mastiffs are so expensive is the maintenance costs. Being one of the largest and fluffiest dog breeds in the world, they will require a lot of money, effort, and energy to maintain. Even if you get one of the less expensive ones, their grooming and upkeep will cost you thousands of dollars a year. So Tibetan Mastiffs are not a breed that you'd want to purchase without good financial security. Apart from the cost of the puppy alone, you can expect to shell out over six grand for the first year of the puppy's life. After that, the costs can be over $2,000 a year. This includes initial costs like spaying and neutering, vaccinations, collars, and other equipment. Considering these dogs can live for about 10 to 12 years, the lifetime cost may be around $30,000 to $50,000. By contrast, other pedigree dogs like the Shiba Inu cost only about $18,000 per lifetime. Another thing of note is that since Tibetan Mastiffs are mostly found in Asia, you may have to pay extra for things like transport and taxes. As they're also one of the hairiest dogs with a thick undercoat, grooming may be more expensive. The average grooming cost for a Tibetan Mastiff was found to be about $70 per visit. In a study of 43 different dog breeds by Go Banking Rates, the Tibetan Mastiff was found to be one of the most expensive dog breeds to own. This is primarily because of the higher grooming and maintenance costs of such large and hairy dogs. The Source The final reason why Tibetan Mastiffs can be so expensive is because it depends on the breeder you source them from. If you get a puppy from a reputable breeder, say one who with a Tibetan Mastiff and who has won dog price shows, or one that has a rare golden red color, be prepared to shell out thousands or into the millions. Tibetan Mastiffs are very large investments, so you want to ensure you get the best possible insurance for their health and vitality. These breeds are more dependent on reputable breeders than other dogs. A reputable breeder can cost you in the range of $1,700 to $7,000. Some breeders will also specialize in breeding pups with exaggerated features of the Tibetan Mastiffs. For example, you can find pups with a much larger and thicker mane than the original Tibetan Mastiffs. The Tibetan Mastiff pups you find now are much fluffier and bigger than what they used to be. When looking at breeders, temperament is an important characteristic to look for as well. As these are really big dogs, they can overpower people and children easily. So a pup with a bad temperament can be dangerous if not cared for or trained improperly. But otherwise, they're not really over aggressive dogs. A less reputable breeder might cost less, but you don't want to run the risk of the puppy developing health issues. Tibetan Mastiffs are especially susceptible to health issues like hypothyroidism, elbow dysplasia, and hip dysplasia. In other words, these giant puppers can become overweight easily and have joint issues. This is the Bugatti Chiron, and it costs a gargantuan $3 million. Don't feel too bad about the hefty price tag. There are fewer Chirons than billionaires in the world. So not even every billionaire can have one. So why is it so expensive? Number one, it's a Bugatti. The first reason why the Bugatti Chiron is so expensive is because well, it's a Bugatti. This is a luxury brand of cars whose exclusive clientele includes the most renowned entertainers and athletes in the world. It's also one of the most recognizable luxury car brands in the world, with each Bugatti instantly recognizable by its giant horseshoe-shaped Bugatti logo. It's considered the haute couture of modern cars. 
you would be joining the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Floyd Mayweather, Tom Brady, Chris Brown, and Tom Cruise. In this list, Cristiano famously owns a Bugatti Chiron. So, of course, any supercar owned by such an exclusive group is going to set you back a few million. In fact, let's look at some of the Chiron siblings. The Ducati Varian, which is the Chiron's predecessor, will cost you over a million dollars. Meanwhile, Bugatti's latest masterpiece, the Bugatti La Voiture Noire, will cost you an eye-watering 19 million. That money can get you a grand mansion in Beverly Hills. Now, at the time, the La Voiture set the record for the most expensive car in the world. Now, this is also so exclusive that Bugatti only plans to release two custom cars every year. Number two, exclusivity. The second reason Bugatti Chiron is so expensive is because, like most luxury cars, there aren't many of them in the world. At the time, Bugatti only aimed at producing 500 Bugatti Chirons for the whole world. And considering the fact that there are over 2,000 billionaires in the world, not even all the billionaires will have the luxury of owning a Bugatti Chiron. But what makes Bugatti Chiron, or Bugattis in general, so rare? Well, the answer is pure craftsmanship and detailing that goes into each of its parts. Did you know that the carbon fiber pattern on the hood from each side meets at a perfect 45 degree angle in the middle? That's almost an impossible level of attention to detail. Unlike regular cars, this level of detailing and quality means that it can't be mass produced or the production outsourced to cheaper countries. Each and every Bugatti Chiron is made in their production factory located in Molsheim, France, and it takes about two months to assemble a single car. All their cars are assembled by hand thanks to the team of technicians who work tirelessly on site to make it happen. This way, they can control the quality of detailing of each and every one of its individual 2,600 parts. Some people even refer to the Bugatti factory in France as the dream factory. Here it's not a regular industrial car plant, it's an artist's studio with no assembly robots in sight. Number 3. The Engine the third reason the Bugatti Chiron is so expensive is because of its iconic engine. The driving force behind the Bugatti Chiron is the quad turbocharged 8 liter W16 engine. It contains four turbochargers with work in a two stage turbocharging configuration. Boasting the top production engine in the world, the Bugatti's engine contains 16 cylinders and a displacement of 8 liters, all firing to producing a whopping 1500 horsepower. In comparison, a Lamborghini Huracan engine is only producing about 600 horsepower. The engine produces Produces about 1,600 newton meters of torque. The engine gobbles about 60,000 liters of air per minute. Just to put this into perspective, the average human displaces only 8 liters of air per minute while resting. With such immense power and strength, you can only imagine the heat that's produced within a Bugatti Chiron engine. In fact, it requires 800 liters of water per minute circulating through the engine to cool it. The 8 liter W16 also has 10 radiators just to cool it down. You may be wondering at this point, how do they even find the materials to withstand such heat? Well, the Chiron's engine incorporates some of the most expensive and rarest materials in an engine. In fact, the exhaust is made of titanium, because stainless steel is too common. Metals like titanium and carbon fiber reinforced plastics CFRP, give the engine incredible strength while being lightweight, but it also comes with a hefty price tag. While looking at a Chiron's engine, the catalytic converters are also worth noting. The device filters out toxic gases found in the exhaust gases of the engine. The Chiron contains an impressive six catalytic converters. Here's where it gets really impressive, as if it wasn't already. The catalytic converters all have a total surface area of 230,266 square meters. That's around 30 football fields. Number four, speed. The fourth reason the Bugatti Chiron is so expensive is because of its sheer speed. This is perhaps what the Chiron is best known for, its unparalleled speed. The Chiron can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 62 miles per hour, in 2.4 seconds. An entire second faster than a Lamborghini Huracan. In 2017, the Chiron set the world record when it accelerated from a standing start to 400 kilometers an hour, 249 miles, and back to a rest in an impressive 41.96 seconds. The top limit of a Bugatti Chiron is deliberately limited by the manufacturer at 420 kilometers per hour, or 261 miles. In fact, in order to even get this top speed, you need a key located inside the car to activate it. Without the key, it can only reach 380 kilometers per hour, or 236 miles per hour. To put this into perspective, the top speed of a McLaren P1 is only 217 miles an hour, 
or 115 miles per hour for a BMW i8. The Turan was also the first supercar ever to break the 300 mile per hour ceiling. On August 2nd, 2019, a modified version of the Bugatti Turan hit 304.77 miles per hour on the Volkswagen Era Lesson track in Germany. This is, of course, nothing new to Bugatti, as the French car maker broke a similar record back in 2005 when its Varian sped up to 254 miles an hour. It seems as though the car maker's tired of breaking speed records, because it's claimed that it'll retire from the speed record breaking after the latest by Turan. Number 5. Materials and Design The fifth and final reason why the Bugatti Turan is so expensive is because of its materials and design. We touched a bit on this earlier, but let's dive deeper into its unique design features and materials. Firstly, what is perhaps the Turan's most distinguishing design feature is the C-line in the car's body exterior and interior. What's incredible is that the C-shape comes from a single piece of machined aluminum. This stylishly divides the interior of the car with a lighting unit running along the C-shape profile at the front. This C-shaped light is the longest uninterrupted lighting unit in the automobile industry. The entire car is assembled in two pieces, a front section containing the monocue and the rear section containing the engine. This is not only done for style, but also for safety. Due to the immense heat coming from the engine, if it ever catches fire, it's designed to easily detach from the front section of the car containing the driver. The engine also uses expensive materials like titanium and carbon fiber. During assembly of the car sections, even the screws holding them together are made from titanium, each only weighing about 34 grams. The Monocue is completely made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic CFRP. It's one of the most expensive materials in the world. This makes it super lightweight and robust, but also as much as 10 times more expensive than steel. And if you're wondering what the iconic Bugatti horseshoe shaped grill in the front is made of, it's made from titanium as well. The Bugatti logo is made from black enamel and silver for a nice touch. The inauguration of a U.S. president can cost upwards of $275 million. So why are U.S. presidential inaugurations so expensive? You would think that a fella handing over power would hand over an actual baton and be done with it, just as they do in the track race. However, that's not the way real power is handed over from the current holder to the future one, at least not in the U.S. and at the highest level. In the U.S., power handover at the highest level involves carefully planned residential inaugurations, and these are normally time-consuming, complicated, and expensive undertakings that not everyone is deeply fond of. Take the 2017 presidential inauguration, for instance, which reportedly cost between $175 million and $200 million. That's almost enough money to buy every man and woman in California three Snickers bars each. This money paid for a concert, official dinners, and parties, the swearing-in and the parade, as well as the inaugural ball. Plus, you don't think all those cops and military men busy everywhere ensuring that no crackpot got the opportunity to mess things up would be paid in lottery tickets and sodden ice cream cones, did you? Yeah, securing inauguration costs money too, and we mean serious money. Of the estimated $175 to $200 million spent during the 2017 presidential inauguration, around $70 million of that came from donations finangled from private individuals. The rest of the bill was forked up by taxpayers, and for the looks of things, they are increasingly unhappy at the cost of this pomp and pageantry. One of the most amazing things about U.S. presidential inaugurations is the fact that both main parties spend roughly the same for the inauguration of the candidates. Yeah, regardless of the party the winning president belongs to, the cost of his or her inauguration stays the same when the ravages of time and inflation are taken into account. This goes to show that politicians and political parties in the U.S. are really the same as far as inaugurations go, and this despite their determination to consistently paint their opponents in the blackest light. Now, for every inauguration, the cost can be concisely divided into which is borne by the federal government and that borne by what is known as the Presidential Inaugural Committee. This Presidential Inaugural Committee organizes the inaugural balls and concerts, set up dinners with the prospective presidents and vice presidents, and calls all the cabinet appointees to a luncheon where they can then stuff their faces all they like. All this doesn't come cheap, and fellas with the deepest pockets who make a point of sharing their largesse with gross abandon get the best seats and all the tickets they want. As for the federal government, it does its bit by paying the salaries of all law enforcement personnel drafted to put in their best in making inaugurations successful in the extreme. The actual swearing in is paid for by the federal government too, plus associated costs like the construction of the massive stage of the Capitol and the official luncheon held by Congress to welcome the new president and his able deputy. 
And lest we forget, the feds also pay for the massive cleanup that follows. Plus fireworks, fencing, and a holiday for government employees. So why are U.S. presidential inaugurations so expensive? Inaugurations in the states often involve profligate spectacles that seem out of place in the modern era and can seem incomprehensible to non-Americans. The main explanation as to why U.S. presidential inaugurations are so expensive has mainly to do with the fact that the U.S. is held up as a shiny beacon of democracy. As such, holding a showy, mind-blowing, brain-shifting, and utterly expensive presidential inauguration shows the world that the most powerful country in the globe just got a new leader, and they better know that, or else. Another reason is that presidential inaugurations are rather tempting targets. America is the biggest bull in the pasture and has a lot of enemies that would love nothing better than to see it fall flat in its face. A presidential inauguration provides an excellent opportunity for enemies of the United States to damage its credibility in some way. Holding such forces at bay is not cheap and requires the liberal expenditure of men and materials, plus the activation of both proactive and reactive security measures. And these cost money. Here's another reason. Americans love entertainment. Coming as it does so soon after the Christmas holidays, presidential inaugurations provide excellent entertainment to Americans of all stripes and citizens of other countries as well. They are magnificent sights, and putting together magnificent sights on the cheap doesn't usually work out well. America is also one of the most prosperous countries in the world, so while the $175 million or so spent on presidential inaugurations might seem like an unconscionable waste to most of the world, it is actually around the cost of a single American warplane, the F-22 Raptor. Given such relatively insignificant costs, it appears likely that the American government sees the price of its inauguration as worth it to the last cent, and will keep at it long enough to make the moon tired of its orbit across the sky. And finally, it bears noting that cleaning up after the inauguration is expensive. That's right. Inaugurations are massive spectacles that usually draw crowds in abundance. Such crowds tend to litter like they're being paid for it, and cost of cleaning up all of this, plus other garbage resulting from the inauguration, is not insignificant in the least. Fancy going to the next presidential inauguration? Do so if you must, but do take the time to wonder what you would do and how your life could change if you had $175 million sitting pretty in your bank account. There are human hair wigs that are made from natural human hair, and they can go up to a price of about $8,000. So why are human hair wigs so expensive? There is a limited supply. The first and main reason why human hair wigs are so expensive is because they require human hair that can be used in wigs. Firstly, you need to find people that are willing to donate hair in the first place. You can't just take it. The most common places to source that hair is actually in Asian countries like Vietnam, China, and India, where women grow their hair longer and are willing to donate. China is the world's largest exporter of human hair wigs, having exported nearly $820 million worth of human hair wigs in 2019. Other common countries include places like Brazil and Peru, You'll often see these labeled as Virgin Indian or Virgin Brazilian hair. Companies have to travel out to these places and check the quality and texture of the hair. Then they pay these women a small fee for it. As such, all these efforts to source and pay for the actual hair add up to the cost of the human hair wigs. In some of these cultures, like in Asia, for example, long hair is prized, so some women may be reluctant to cut their hair and give it away. In fact, some women do it out of desperation. Some poor women in Vietnam, for example, see selling their hair as a way to not resort to human trafficking. There have been cases where organized gangs in these countries go up to these women with a knife out and cut their hair to steal it. Also, considering the fact that it takes around two months on average to grow one inch of human hair, the supply is actually quite limited. And not all human hair is good for use in wigs either. Some may be unhygienic, like containing lice, for example. So some of it would need to be thrown away. To give a rough estimate, it can take around eight ponytails to make a single wig. Takes ages to make. The second reason why human hair wigs are so expensive is because the wigs themselves take ages to make. The hair has to be cleaned, detangled, sorted, and then attached to a base made from either silk or lace. Then they're sorted by length, color, whether they're dyed or not, and texture. To ensure that the hair is silky, even, and smooth as possible, the hair undergoes a very fine combing. Here, almost 10 to 60 percent of the hair can be lost. The base is first made by determining the measurements of the head. This is where it gets tricky because measurements are so subjective and vary a lot. Head length and circumference are the primary measurements used. 
The individual strands, or very small groups of hair strands, are then knotted into small holes on the base of the wig. The knotting technique differs depending on which direction the hair has to naturally flow. The hair at the top of the head requires a different knotting technique because this is where most people part their hair and attempt various stylings, so the knotting here has to be very robust. The knotting at the top of the wig is done by hand as well, which is a very meticulous process. This stage alone can take about 10 hours per wig. However, this time is worth it because it's what makes the wig look realistic. With the more expensive brands, the hair is much easier to maintain as they're less likely to tangle. This is because of all the hair cuticles are in the same direction, but this is a painstakingly long process to make. Demand is soaring. The third reason why human hair wigs are so expensive is because there's a much higher demand now against an already limited supply. Wearing wigs and hair extensions has become a far more mainstream idea than it used to be, thanks to social media. With the rise of platforms like Instagram and reality stars like the Jenners and the Kardashians, there's a much greater interest in having good hair for the gram. Extensions and wigs are now popular even in demographics that have never really worn them much before. More and more people are realizing the benefits of natural hair wigs. You can achieve any number of styles without damaging your own hair and scalp. This demand is likely to keep increasing in the near future as more people opt for human hair wigs. In fact, the global wig and hair extension market is projected to grow around 8% between 2018 and 2024. There's an especially high demand for the most realistic wigs possible, as fake-looking synthetic wigs are quite obvious in selfies and videos, so this drives up the cost of human hair wigs even further. Another interesting thing to note is that the consumers these days don't care much about the source of the hair as long as it looks good. Before, people were a bit reluctant to wear body parts that once belonged to somebody, especially a stranger, but that reluctance has seemed to wear off and human hair wigs are becoming more normalized in beauty culture. This is mainly driven by Instagram, where wig makers can showcase tutorials and videos about their product. The Source The fourth reason why human hair wigs can be expensive is because of where the hair comes from. Some manufacturers will source hair from salons, drain pipes, and hair donations. These are the cheapest form of hair. Even here, a lot of money and time is spent on cleaning and processing the waste hair. If the suppliers are willing to travel and source hair directly from women, then the cost will be higher. Some women in Vietnam can be paid between $1 to $5 for their hair. However, some of the more ethical fair trade suppliers like Remy New York will pay the women as much as $100, making their human hair wigs and extensions naturally more expensive. Another common way to source hair, especially in India, is to collect them from Hindu temples. In the Venkatsuwara temple in Tirumala, India, for example, there's a ritual where they shave the heads of young girls completely. The leftover hair is then sold cheaply or given to wig makers. In some cases, the hair can cost as much as $700 per pound. Another thing of note is that certain hair types are deemed more valuable than others. Caucasian hair, for example, tends to be more expensive to source. This is partly because the cost of living is higher, and also because the textures and natural hair colors like blonde and red are harder to find. A Caucasian woman with natural blonde hair can be paid as much as $1,500 for their hair. Black Asian hair, on the other hand, tends to be cheaper because there's a larger supply. The Base Material The fifth and final reason why human hair wigs are so expensive is because of the base material. The base material is so important because it affects how realistic the wig looks. You can have the purest virgin natural hair, but if that hair is not sitting right on the wig, it can ruin your entire look. The most common materials used to make the base wigs are lace and silk. These could be full lace or lace front wigs, where only part of the base is made from lace. Lace wigs are typically more common and cheaper as the material is synthetic. However, lace wigs don't look very realistic because the knots are visible and there are artificial looking grid lines at the base of the hair. Silk wigs offer the most natural and skin-like base. At a shocking cost of five billion plus dollars, the Apple Park easily makes it to any list of the most expensive buildings on the planet. But why is it so expensive? The main building is humongous. The first reason why Apple Park is so expensive has to do with the incredibly massive nature of the main building. Photos don't do it justice, and it is one of those office complexes that get you drooling and slack-jawed with awe at its scope and apparent complexity when you're finally within spitting distance of it. It is humongous to say the least. 
This circular building is a mile in circumference, has 2.8 million square foot of space, and is the biggest naturally ventilated building on the planet, as well as one of the most energy efficient, apart from hosting some of the largest solar roofs on Earth. We reckon that if you were in top shape, you could run around it in about five to six minutes. A walk could take you up to an hour, if you dawdled with zeal. Beneath this circular behemoth is a tunnel that leads to a vast underground garage with 8,255 parking spaces. Also present in the park is a thousand-seater theater named after Jobs, whose total cost is $179,437,000. $885. This theater's lobby alone costs around $12 million to build. The main building also has a visitor center built at a cost of $109,670,640, which has a cafe, guest reception area, display area, and plenty of parking. There's also an office building with four floors, a mechanical rooftop, cafeteria, and espresso bar that was built for $115,370,380. The building also boasts a 100,000 square foot fitness center that cost nearly $17 million to put up, with this space containing a massive yoga studio, physical therapy space, and laundry facilities. The Apple Park is in Cupertino, California, and sits on 176 acres of prime land that reportedly cost about $160 million to purchase. It is big with a capital B and designed with sustainability in mind. Eight years was required to proceed from the planning and proposal stages to the permit and construction stages. Some 12,000 workers call the park home and members of the public are not allowed to gallivant inside. Built in accordance with the design philosophy of Steve Jobs, the park is meant to take the form of a nature park more than an usual office space that we're used to, and around 80% of it's green, with trees beautifully planted around, plus an orchard whose produce is consumed on site. The park also produces around 75% of its own power needs, some 17 megawatts, via rooftop solar panels. Apart from being massive, another explanation of the fantastic cost is the unusual circular design of the spaceship. Circles are curvy, as your eyes are no doubt aware and it is this curve that makes circular construction such an expensive proposition. Now let's take a quick break here for the quiz. What's the weight of the heaviest glass panels that make up the most of the exterior of the spaceship? Is it A, two tons, B, five tons, C, six tons, or D, three tons? Think you know the answer? Write it right now in the comment section below and keep watching until the end of the video to find out if you're correct as we reveal the answer. The spaceship. Check out the main building at the Apple Park, often called the spaceship due to its immense circular shape. This is a four-story building that reportedly cost so $427 million to build and used over 3,000 custom-made glass panels. All 3,000 of these panels are curved, and they're actually the biggest curved glass panels found on any structure at the present and are made to the highest standards possible. They measure from 36 to 46 feet in width and 10 and a half feet long, making them two times larger than normal. These glass panels were crafted by Foster and Partners in association with Seal and Sadak, with Seal having to expand their production facilities to fully meet the demand of these panels. Specially made to prevent distortion or cloudy, these panels stretch for three miles around the circumference of the spaceship, giving the building transparency and a minimalistic and innovative look that perfectly meshes with Apple's long-standing design philosophy. They also double as the walls of this monstrous edifice and are made with user safety in mind and possess excellent insulation properties. Additionally, these glass panels were manufactured with a previously unheard of tolerance of just 0.8 millimeters, weigh at several tons apiece, and create the impression of a building that's constructed out of one enormous piece of glass. Were they flat rather than curved, they could have been easily manufactured cheaper and not required special machines to craft and install. The only problem with these panels is that they were so transparent that they're easy to walk into. Luckily, Apple's rectified that. The spaceship is also designed to be earth weight resistant. It can, in fact, move more than four feet to better withstand earthquakes, employing basic isolation technologies that will help it live through even the biggest earthquakes ever recorded. The base isolation system in use here consists of some 692 big saucers made of stainless steel, all of which are two stories below ground level, and these are modeled on those used in Japan. While this earthquake-resistant system might seem like overkill, it bears remembering that Apple Park is well within the earthquake country, and there's this little thing known as the San Andreas Fault miles beneath the ground that can shift at a moment's notice and ruin lives, careers, non-protected buildings, and so on. So, we give thanks for the shifting ability of the spaceship. May it shift and dance forever. The obsession with detail extends to a 330-ton and 92 feet tall steel-reinforced campus restaurant glass doors, which are engineered to close and open with nary a sound. As y'all might know, Steve Jobs rarely did anything by half measures, and this park is the perfect monument to his dreams and aspirations and is perhaps the most effective and efficient office building on the planet. 
He wanted the best and most unique office building in the world that made use of the latest technologies and processes, which would be as distinctive as his character and as earth-shaking as his many inventions, and he got it in spades. Costs be damned. Fanatical attention to detail. The third reason why the Apple Park is so expensive has to do with the fanatical levels of attention to detail. While the more than $5 billion cost of Apple Park includes the price of construction, design costs, and demolition of the buildings that were already in the area, plus buying the over 100 acres on which it was sited, a large percentage can be attributed to Jobs' need to perfect whatever he came into contact with. What this means is that every building on the campus enjoys a truly exceptional fit and finish, and that's precisely what's usually found in just about all Apple products. For Jobs, the park was his magnum opus, and he wanted structures without any seam or gap, any fault of any kind, or visible paint strokes of any kind. Thus, every wall, floor, and even ceiling on the campus are are polished and you have to look hard and squint even harder to see a bolt or a screw. Jobs even specified that gaps between surfaces should be 1 32nd of an inch at the most, whereas the usual standard used in construction in the States was an eighth of an inch. Moreover, it is usual to cast concrete ceilings in place, but that wasn't good enough for Jobs. Now, he ordered the ceilings to be cast in molds and then placed in their required positions, with this not only guaranteeing precision and uniformity, but also ratcheting up the costs, of course. That wasn't the last of it by any measure, with all interior wood used in the building taking from a single species of maple tree, and even then only the top quality heartwood found in the inner part of the tree was utilized. Stuff like these pushed up the construction costs and led to delays and ensured that the edifice was not completed on schedule. Reports even had it stated that after Jobs passed on, the Apple management spent over a year and a half debating the design of door handles to be used within the park. This kind of extreme attention to minutia and detail was apparently too much for the first general contractors hired for the project. This was DPR Construction in Skanska, USA, and they reportedly preferred running for the hills at full speed rather than adhere to the insane level of detail that the project called for. Only the best materials were used. The fourth reason why the Apple Park in Cupertino, California is so expensive is that only the best materials were used in its construction by the best workmen and designers in the business and it was all mostly bespoke. The late Steve Jobs was a notorious perfectionist, and the construction of the circular spaceship, that's the Apple Park, exactly mirrored that aspect of his character. No expense was spared to make the edifice as sublime as possible and brain-melting in all respects. With a final cost of over $5 billion, this translates to at least $1,785 for every square foot, or $12.40 for every square inch, however you want to measure it, making the Apple Park a rather expensive proposition. Initially projected to cost $3 billion or less, construction costs quickly ballooned to over $5 billion since the inheritors of Steve's job vision were not willing to accept using second best materials and were more than ready to spend any amount and force the invention of new processes and practices to see their dream of the future come true. This resulted in the widespread use of materials of construction that were both expensive and unusual labor costs. The fifth reason why Apple Park is so expensive has to do with the heady construction costs. Constructing a building of this magnitude would never be cheap, even in the best of times. But costs went up because at the time the Apple Park was taking shape, the Silicon Valley area was experiencing an economic boom. Yeah, economic booms are great as new money and people flow in and there are plenty of jobs to go around. Booms, however, can lead to widening income equality, plus increasing poverty and homelessness while raising the general costs of living. Anyway, when Apple Park was being built, there was a shortage of qualified construction workers in the Bay Area. More had to be imported from elsewhere, and all had to be paid good money to dissuade them from up and leaving before the construction was completed. So high labor cost is another reason why the overall cost of Apple Park ended up being so expensive. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you the weight of the heaviest panes of glass used to make the spaceship such a glittering masterpiece. And if you answered three tons, give yourself a pat in the back. This is the world famous Titanic. Despite its tragedy, it was the most luxurious ocean liner of its time, and its first class ticket cost up to 4,350 pounds in 1912, which is about a whopping $100,000 today. So why was its first class so expensive? Accommodation. The first reason the Titanic's first class was so expensive was because of the luxury accommodation. The ship had a total of nine decks, making its height equivalent to that of a building with 11 floors. Only the topmost few decks were dedicated to the first class accommodation. This is where the noise and vibration from the ship's engines were lowest. Despite being an ocean liner, the Titanic's primary focus was luxury. The first class, in particular, was built to mirror the luxury of New York's top hotels at the time. 
The Titanic's first class didn't just have rooms, they had full-blown hotel-style suites. The cheapest ticket you could get on the Titanic's first class was for the standard cabins, for around 30 pounds at the time. In today's money, that would have been about 3,000 pounds. These somewhat modest cabins, well, okay, modest compared to the other ones in first class, were located on the A-deck, or the uppermost part of the ship. These standard cabins consisted of either single or double berth staterooms. They came with their own dressing table, sofa made from fine horsehair, and a marble sink. Some of the standard cabins also had extra bunk beds that could be folded down over the main bed to accommodate guests. After the A deck, the B and C decks consisted of more lavish staterooms for the first class passengers. These had double beds instead of single beds and were far more spacious. They came with built-in wardrobes, electric outlets, and a call button to call a steward. Despite the whole of first class accommodation being centrally heated, these more luxurious state rooms got their own electrical heating and could request their beds be electrically warmed by a steward. Then we get to the most luxurious accommodations on the first class, the suites. Altogether, the Titanic had 39 of these luxury suites. The ticket prices for these first class suites ranged around £870, or $49,642 in today's money. With these prices, you can expect nothing less than a luxury suite at a five-star hotel. These suites came with spacious walk-in closets, ensuite bathrooms, and separate space for servants. Parlor Suites The second reason why the Titanic's first class was so expensive was because of the ultra-lavish parlor suites. The parlor suites would have been the most expensive things on the ship coming at around 4,350 pounds in 1912, or, like I said before, a whopping $100,000 in today's money. There were altogether four of these exquisite parlor suites. They took up so much space, there were only two parlor suites per each deck on the B and C decks. The ones on the B deck were the more luxurious of the suites and were called the promenade suites. Because these suites had their very own promenade decks, where people could walk on and privately spend time. They were also close to the first class entrances, so all that heavy luggage of the richest passengers could be easily carried. Each of the parlor suites were lavishly furnished. They each had not one, but two walk-in closets, a private bathroom, and very expensively furnished, spacious living rooms. The living rooms were designed to hold parties, and they had a faux fireplace, card tables, comfy couches, and writing desks. So, as we can see, the Titanic was quite literally a hotel on the sea for those who could afford those things. Sporting Facilities The third reason why the Titanic's first class was so expensive was because of access to state-of-the-art sporting facilities. First class passengers had access to private squash courts, gymnasium, and a swimming pool. While those may seem like nothing compared to the ultra-modern cruise ships of these days, which feature entire water parks, the Titanic's sporting facilities were quite lavish for a ship of its time. Remember, this was only 1912, it's around the time of World War I. So what did the state-of-the-art gymnasium have? Well, it had a punching bag, rowing machine, mechanical bicycles, a weightlifting machine, uh, an electric horse, and two electric camels. Not sure why. What on earth were electric horses and camels? Now, they aren't electric joy rides you get to at the theme parks or anything like that. Like their name suggests, they were electrical machines that moved like horses and camels to strengthen the core and arms. Yeah, exquisite food. The fourth reason why the Titanic's first class was so expensive was because of the exquisite food it served. It wouldn't have been called the most luxurious ocean liner if the food was subpar. Like a five-star hotel, the meals on the Titanic were exquisite. Did you know that the Titanic was one of the few ships that offered food for all of the classes on the ship? Yeah, this includes the third class. In fact, there are still a few menus that survived the tragedy, which show us a glimpse of what their final meals were actually like. One menu from one of the dining rooms, we can see that the guests enjoyed dinners with 10 courses. These included the finest and most indulgent meat, poultry, and seafood dishes. Some of these dishes included oysters, crab, squab, salmon, lamb, and duck. They were also the fine cuts of meat, such as sirloin steak or filet mignon lily. Aside from spacious first-class dining rooms, there were also restaurants where patrons could enjoy some fine dining. 
Now, of course, these were extra and you had to pay for the meals, but the most luxurious and expensive of the restaurants was the a la carte restaurant in the first class. The dining room of the a la carte was modeled after the one at the Ritz and could accommodate 137 guests in one sitting. According to many sources, the restaurant was the most lavishly decorated out of all of the rooms. It featured elegant French decor, specifically the Louis XVI Baroque-style furniture and decor. There was even enough space for an orchestra. In fact, on the night of the tragedy, some of the wealthier passengers were hosting a lavish party at the a la carte restaurant. Suffice to say, it didn't go on for long. Much of the food was modeled after French cuisine and included dishes such as the pâté de foie gras and peaches with chartreuse jelly. Needless to say, none of these come cheap. There were also other French-style cafes and restaurants. Now, of course, with all this indulgent food, there has to be amenities where you can work off all that extra weight. So there's no wonder the Titanic had a well-equipped gym and sporting facilities. Other amenities. The fifth reason why the first class of the Titanic was so expensive was because of the sheer amount of extra amenities that were available. Apart from the squash courts, swimming pool, and gym, there was also a spa area of Turkish-style baths. The use of the baths was obviously separated into the different genders, with women only being allowed at a certain time and then men only being allowed at another time. The Titanic also had its very own barbershop for first-class passengers, so the passengers could be well-groomed during the voyage. Other amenities for these passengers included libraries, reading and writing rooms, smoking rooms, as well as grand lounge rooms. The promenade deck was also a popular area for meetings and gatherings. Titanic spared no expense in keeping their guests entertained as much as possible. However, featuring a restaurant with an orchestra, you'd think they'd have laundry facilities. But apparently, they didn't because of the lack of fresh water. Fact. One adult AM Simone chicken will set you back up to a whopping $5,000. So why is it so expensive? They are magical. The first reason why Ayam Samani chickens are so expensive is the potent magical powers that are attributed to it. Supposedly, the blood of this bird, plus some parts, can be used to cure almost any disease, assure good luck, and possibly summon helpful spirits. Most people in Asia who buy these birds do so not to chop down on their delicious flesh, but to make use of the magical powers that these chickens are supposed to possess. Of course, the only sickness the Ayam Samani chicken is liable to cure is hunger, but that doesn't really stop many people from believing that the bird is all shades of special. One specific kind of Ayam Samani, called the Samani Kaikai, is specifically used in a ritual to fight against voodoo, while another, named the Samani Wudatrai, is believed to have an omen's magical power of sending away demons. As such, many people are open to paying almost any price to get their hands on one and are more than willing to place it on a pedestal. The second reason why the Ayam Samani chicken is so much more expensive than most other breeds of chicken is that breeding them is assuredly not the easiest thing in the world, nor something for the faint of heart or those easily discouraged should they attempt it. Yes, the Ayam Samani takes a lot of patience and resources to be successfully bred. The females among them have trouble with childbearing, or in this case, egg laying. To make matters worse, they can only lay around 80 eggs annually, whereas there are more than a few chicken breeds out there that easily pop out an egg a day for years. The female Ayam Samani apparently thinks of herself as a queen and doesn't like too much stress. As proof of that, once she's laid around 30 eggs, she'll just stop producing any more and rest up before resuming around a month later. Even worse, not all eggs laid will be viable, and this serves to drive up the cost of the chickens that do hatch. Well, let's take a break here for the quiz. Now, since the Ayam Samani is black as night, does it also lay black eggs? Is the answer A, yes, it lays black eggs, B, no, it lays blue eggs, C, no, it lays white eggs, or D, no, it lays red eggs? Think you know the answer? Well, write it right now in the comment section below and keep watching till the end of the video to find out if you're correct as we reveal the answer. They are rare. The third reason why the Ayam Samani commands such a high price is it's rare. Actually, though, this eye-catching chicken is more than rare. It's very rare, which is a difference. It's seldom seen outside of its home country of Indonesia, and you usually have more chance of coming across a unicorn than setting eyes on a live Ayam Samani. We can't really emphasize this too much, but it bears stating and restating that the Yam Samani is a very unique bird that cannot be mistaken for anything else. As such, lots of people wanted it rooting around in their backyard or seated legs up on a platter in their dining table, which meant that it was shipped out in large quantities from its native country to various regions of the world where it mostly failed to do well. 
This caused a severe population decline, which means that the birds now live in command a premium, which is a polite way of saying that they cost an arm and a leg. Invariably, the rarer something is, the more expensive it will be, and of course, the rarer something is, the more people want to be able to boast that they own it, which goes to explain why the Ayam Samani is anything but cheap. They are incredibly unique. The fourth reason that helps explain why the Ayam Samani can cost as much as a used car is because there are a lot of people that'll pay whatever's asked for such a unique bird. That's right, the world's full of rich people, and they want nothing more than to possess something special that their neighbor and friends don't. How else do you know you're rich? The Ayam Samani fits the bill perfectly, which means the buyers will always be found for such chickens no matter how high the price is. Essentially, the massive cost of such chickens is directly attributable to the fact that stocks are small and buyers plentiful, with this situation allowing sellers to sell as high as they wish and smile all the way to the bank. They cannot be imported to the States. The fifth reason why the Ayam Samani is so expensive is that direct imports from Indonesia straight to the States are out of the question, for now. The United States Department of Agriculture expressly forbids such imports due to fear of importers inadvertently introducing diseases that might run rampant through the country and infect both poultry and humans. The U.S. is, of course, the biggest market for A.M. Samadhi, and the forbidding of direct imports of this bird means that a few sellers available in the country are free to charge as much as they think the market will support. And the market has so far shown no problems with supporting very high prices for these birds, with the situation set to continue for uh, the foreseeable future. So let me ask you this, if you had the money, would you buy the Ayam Samani? And if so, would the purchase be for Sunday dinner or to show off to your friends and neighbors? Let us know in the comments section. All black. The sixth reason why the Ayam Samani is so expensive is simply in the extreme and compelling too. See, there are chickens and then there's the Ayam Samani, which could well be the most beautiful chicken on the planet, if that was a thing, and perhaps the strangest looking which it is. When in motion, it looks unlike anything else out there and commands attention without even trying. This bird is all black. The feathers, black. Bones, black. Organs, black. The muscles, black. And even the blood is dark red and black enough that if you squint real hard, it's black. With its unusual appearance and given the kind of folklore and the superstitions attached to these birds, the amazing thing is that they're not pricier than they are at the moment. The Ayam Samani is a one of a kind and prices for it reflect that. They are delish. The seventh reason why folks are prepared to pay fortunes for the Yam Samani chicken is because it's rather good eating. Those who have been lucky enough to have a little bit of this chicken in their mouth and hands confess that it tastes similar to the regular chicken meat you're used to, with the difference being it's softer and easier to chew. In case you were wondering, the Yam Samani's black color does not leak out like a set of poorly dried clothes when the bird's cooked and made ready for a one-way trip to your stomach. Incidentally, the meat of this black chicken is chock full of antioxidants and has less cholesterol than other chicken meat. This makes it an excellent choice for those who like to eat healthy and feel in select company by chopping down expensive meat and washing it down with even more expensive wine. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you if the Ayam Samani chicken laid black eggs. If you guessed no, it lays white eggs, you were right. Give yourself a pat in the back. This special and expensive breed of chicken lays eggs a cream color with a pink accent. Lovely. Fact. When the Toronto Raptors won the 2019 NBA Championship, team members were each presented with expensive championship rings that cost at least $100,000 a piece. So why are NBA Championship rings so expensive? They're mighty blinged out. The first reason why NBA Championship rings are so expensive is they quite often have a huge amount of bling on them. This includes gold and a variety of jewels and precious metals, all of which make these rings very eye-catching and amazingly aesthetic. The earliest examples of these rings were actually rather plain affairs by comparison. Bling on championship rings only really started becoming a thing when the New York Yankees spent the 70s producing increasingly more intricate rings, with other teams rushing to copy them. And here we are, half a century later. Perhaps the greatest example of bling on an NBA championship ring would be that given to the LA Lakers for their 2020 win. It looks like something Floyd Merriweather would splash seven figures on after another payday in the ring. It uses 180 grams of yellow gold, 804 precious stones, and includes some 15 and a half carats of yellow and white diamonds. Designed by Jason Arashman, who, by the way, has an impressive list of celebrity clients, this visual masterpiece with two faces was crafted to honor the memory of Kobe Bryant and has icons that reference the current pandemic and social unrest in America. A prettier sight? There never was. While the Lakers championship ring sure does look swell, 
the one that the Toronto Raptors were presented with in 2019 looks fit for a king. This championship ring was a massive affair with over 640 diamonds and tended to sparkle like a golden galaxy full of stars. One of these pretty things was given in appreciation to a diehard supporter of the Raptors who'd never missed a home game in 24 years. That is devotion, and that is a just reward for it. As can be imagined, loaded with bling as they are, NBA championship rings are never cheap, and they can't be. You can't just get the gold jewels and diamonds used to make them from anywhere, and they cost a pretty penny too. Unless you're on the top rich list, buying one of these things is going to make a dent in your bank account. And now it's time for the quiz. How much time do you think they took to produce the 2020 NBA championship ring? Was it A, four weeks, B, eight weeks, C, six weeks, or D, 10 weeks? Think you know the answer? Write it down in the comment section below and keep watching to the end of the video to find out if you're correct as we reveal the answer. They're custom made. The second reason why NBA championship rings are so expensive is they're all bespoke. These differ a lot from year to next, and they're custom made too by the best jewelers in the business. Each one of these rings is lovingly crafted as an homage to the team that's going to wear it, and it's expected to proudly proclaim the history, successes, sacrifices, and efforts of this team while bearing witness that it was all worth it. Custom made stuff is seldom cheap, and given the attention to detail what each ring is made of, and the story it tells, you add in the crazy amount of golden jewels that they come loaded with, then it's understandable why they cost so much. The most recent of these rings are not really wearable given the size and the heft, and they do appear to be getting even bigger and heavier, but they look a lot better than most things you're going to find. Of course, the cost of each ring can be drastically reduced by mass producing them and using less golden jewels and making them less intricate, but that would probably get the players all sorts of riled up, and who could really blame them? They've been spoiled with the best for so long. They're part of legends. The third reason why NBA championship rings can be expensive is that they're part of legends, or at least something legendary. Yes, championship rings are expensive by virtue of the small numbers and the materials used in their construction, but some rings are more expensive than the rest of them owing to the story or the legend that they're attached to. Thus, NBA championship rings won by classic teams like the 2001 Lakers or the 96 Bulls can cost a frightful amount of money. Classic championship rings tend to be very expensive when they're bought at auction. Now, the NBA has legends like the late Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Legends are different from the rest of us mere mortals, and so too are the championship rings that were worn and won by these same legends. As you'd expect, they actually end up costing more than the ones won by their teammates. As an example, in late 2019, a championship ring that was the property of a member of that 93 Bulls team made its way to eBay. The stated price of this was 29923 bucks. Now, the Bulls from 91 to 93 won three consecutive championships and set records while doing so, with Jordan working his magic. Given that the ring in question came from such an iconic period in history, it would have made better sense for it to be much more expensive than it was listed for. Now, a reasonable explanation of that is that this specific ring doesn't belong to a Bulls member of Jordan's caliber. Now, should Jordan or a player of his ilk from the 91-93 team list his ring for sale on eBay, or another auction site for that matter, you can be sure that the price would be in the six figures. The very least. You don't think so? Well, in 2019, the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar auctioned off four of his six championship rings in his possession. He gave all those proceeds to charity, which was nice of him, and someone bought just one of those rings for nearly $400,000. So do you think the buyer would have paid as much if the ring belonged to a mediocre player who just happened to be on the same team as him? Now, in case you were wondering, all four of those rings that belonged to Kareem sold at a cumulative total of $2.9 million, just shy of 3 million bucks. What we're saying is that championship rings are inherently expensive, sure, but that will vary widely depending on who the ring belonged to and the team they played with. And then of course the story surrounding him and them and whatever. Championship rings can be understood as artifacts representing a special and specific time in history, and some people will pay almost anything to have one or more of these things. Now if you're as hardcore of a basketball fan as you think you are, would you be willing to mortgage your house or sell off your car to buy one of these expensive NBA championship rings? Or would that kind of sacrifice just be a little too much for you? Don't be shy, let us know what you think down in the comment section. They symbolize supreme success. The fourth reason why NBA championship rings can be expensive to buy is, well, they're a symbol of ultimate success and the biggest status symbol in the sport. The NBA is, of course, incredibly competitive and filled with great teams and individuals, as well as mediocre ones, too. As such, for a team to triumph over others and emerge as the boss of them all requires no little amount of hard work, resources, and a bit of luck. Thus, every championship ring is an enduring symbol of what can happen when a group of quick-thinking men in sneakers put in their best, triumph over all the odds, and emerge victorious after what's sure to be a very grueling season. Now, having a ring or two gets you immense bragging rights. Just ask LeBron and Shaquille. Each of them have four of these beauties under their names. Success never comes easy in the NBA, and neither do the championship ranks, nor do they come cheap. 
In fact, the more NBA championship rings a player has, the more he's seen as successful, for obvious reasons. And players will do almost anything and move like jackrabbits from one team to another to another just to maximize their chances of getting their hands on one. Now, once they get a ring, they tend to never tire of talking about it or wanting to show it off to anybody with an appreciative pair of eyes. For instance, you remember when Magic Johnson showed all five of his off to Oprah? Championship rings can be rather gaudy and might look like they belong in the fingers of a lord with a mania for exhibitionism, but their significance for the winners is easily understood. They are made big to represent the fact that having such a ring is a massive achievement that might not be repeated during the playing career of the player or the coaching career of the coach. I mean, just look at the players who have the most rings, for example. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, who each have six, these are the most respected players in the sport. Having one also means proud membership of a rather exclusive club filled with past, present, and future NBA championship winners. And this will later on lead to open doors in business and politics when players call it quits with shooting hoops professionally. The player currently with the most rings is Bill Russell, who has 11 championship rings from the Boston Celtics. And now the moment you were waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you what time it took to create the expense of 2020 NBA championship rings. If you guessed four weeks, you give yourself a pat on the back. All copies of this ring distributed to the winning Lakers team were crafted in a rather short four weeks. This face mask costs a gargantuan $1.5 million. So why is it so expensive? 2020 was one crazy year that still defies belief. It initially started as optimistically as a date with a high-end escort before degenerating into farce and tragedy unlimited. Like a date with a high-end escort. Late last year, most of the world was still blissfully unaware of the virus in Wuhan that was soon to expand across most of the globe and claim at least a million people. The pandemic disrupted plans, economies, and lives like a bulldozer with lots of fuel in the tank and a might of its own. Though there's some reason to be hopeful that things are on the mend now that effective vaccines are out in force. With illness and possible demise of breath or cough away, people have found ways to have a little fun, while the rich have found it necessary to spend their money while they still can. If money is not your problem and you need PPE that will protect you from the virus and make you look swell to the limit, then Yavel Jewelry House based in Israel has something for you. This is a jewel encrusted mask whose price is almost equivalent to an annual health budget of some African countries. This mask is custom made and so far its only buyer is a Chinese businessman, art collector and billionaire with plenty of money to throw around and a nose that needs cosseting by diamonds and jewels. This billionaire is reportedly a longtime client of Yuval's and ordered the record-making mask as a way of drumming up publicity for the jewelry firm, which has seen revenues precipitously decline due to the fall of economic activity caused by the coronavirus epidemic. The Yuval COVID-19 protective mask cost a scarcely believable one and a half million dollars and is a bewitching ode to excess and indulgence. It has the inevitable title of the most expensive face mask on the planet, with production and delivery set to be completed before the end of 2020. It's not actually as useless as you might imagine and is equipped with a removable and disposable N99 filter. Such filters are supposedly so good they can filter out mosquito farts at ultra close range. Of course, as we said before, COVID-19 vaccines are out in force and most of the civilized world has unveiled plans to vaccinate their population and get the economies back on track. That seems to suggest that the very fancy work of art that is the Yavel mask won't be seeing much use, unless the owner plans on donating it to a museum. Curious as to why exactly the Yavel mask is so expensive? Well, there are many reasons for that. Like we mentioned earlier, it's covered with enough jewels to look like a glittering piece of alien tech, and it's reportedly constructed with around 250 grams of 18 karat white gold and decorated with over 3,600 all-natural white and black diamonds that collectively tip the scales at 210 carats. All these are not cheap in the least, as anyone who has ever bought a diamond ring for the missus will know. The second reason that explains the ludicrous expense that is the mask is deliberately made to be as expensive as possible. Reportedly, the billionaire who placed the order for it requested the mask at the highest grade, with no expense spared and no limits left unexplored. Yavel was more than happy to oblige with Isaac Levy, the owner and founder of the firm confessing that this specific design requirement was a challenge they were more than happy to accede to. Next up is the fact that the mask is custom made. It is not being churned out in the dozens for an automated factory somewhere and will be handmade to perfection, boasting the best quality and fitting a single individual. That's as to be expected. 
Quality costs money, handmade stuff costs money, and exclusivity costs money. Even if more than one of these masks was produced, it's hard to imagine that it could cost any less than it does at the moment. Of course, a gold and diamond encrusted meteorite bigger than Australia could splash down somewhere in the shallow parts of the Pacific Ocean and crash the price of precious stones and metals, making the production of Yuval masks cheap as sin. Unfortunately, there's more chance of you flapping your arms and flying to the moon than that happening anytime soon. Well, here's the last reason that explains the ludicrous expanse of the Yuval mask. Shock value. Think about it for a while. The main reason this mask is so expensive is to shock us all. The shock value of the mask designed at such an expense and with such quality is bound to make folks envious, disgusted, and amazed all at the same time. The mask was conceived to shock with its overall outrageousness and shock to the bone it does. Whether it's actually practical is another matter entirely, though we wouldn't mind having one or two of these in the closet. While the Yavel mask has its merits for the well healed, not everyone is enamored by it. Comments left on a YouTube documentary that detailed the making of the mask were not very complimentary. Incensed watchers called the mask a waste of money. Click on the playlist to the right to binge watch more So Expensive Seasons. See you there.